What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Recently, one of the subscribers of this channel reached out to me and asked if he should switch to a data analyst career or not, as he is still not sure if this is the right career for him and if he would really like the job. So in this video, I'm gonna spill my heart out about the truth of doing data analysis for a living as a data scientist or data analyst, as I've been doing for the past five years. What are the glamorous and not so glamorous aspects of being a data analyst or data scientist so that you'd have a more realistic image of what this job actually entails. I have a little disclaimer here. After watching this video, you might not want to become a data analyst or data scientist anymore. So be careful. The first thing you might not enjoy is that most of the time will be spent on understanding the data and pre-processing the data. By most of the time, I mean 80 to 90% of the time or even more. In my opinion, data pre-processing is not inherently an uninteresting task. For me, it's actually quite interesting to get to know the data and the business context of it. And also data wrangling is quite fun. But the real problem is that you don't have enough time to do all the cool analysis that you might fancy doing and also not enough time to even interpret what comes out of the analysis. And this gets even worse when the data delivery is delayed and the time frame gets even more squeezed for all of these tasks. This is kind of what you would have to expect and accept and live with it as a data analyst and data scientist. In some projects, it's a little bit worse. In some projects, it's a little bit better, depending on how smooth everything goes. Another common issue is that people are often not very clear or not sure about what they actually want. Even though people are getting more and more aware of what is possible with data, but a lot of times it gets really frustrating when everything is so vague and no one seems to be capable of uh, making a decision and defining what the actual business problem is and what we should focus on solving. You know, it's very different from what you see on Ocago competitions that say clearly what you should be doing, like classifying the uh, dogs and cats pictures. In a lot of cases, our team Team as a data scientist or data analyst would have to go through a lot of vague discussions and make many PowerPoint slides to explain about what all kinds of stuff uh, before we can actually do the work. Error, error, and error. <laughs> Coding errors and other random issues with tooling can be another source of frustration. You'll encounter on a daily basis all kinds of errors, uh, data types error, data format not being compatible, out of memory error, in our Python library versioning errors, just to name a very few, very, very few. I would say that if you don't love solving these errors, and all these little puzzles to some extent, it's gonna be a life of suffering for you ahead. Things will be obviously better when you have more experience, but even if you're good and you're competent with coding, there will always be problems and errors, those that you might never get your head around, those that are never asked on Stack Overflow before, those are not at all described in any documentation whatsoever, and so on and so on. So here's a nerdy example. Once I worked on PySpark and trying to join a big data set, like a very, very big, like billions of rows um, with a small data set. A few months ago, my colleague did something very similar and he suggested me using the broadcast option when joining the two data sets. Uh, he was very convinced that this is a more proper way to do it and it's a, a very beautiful advanced concept in PySpark and we should definitely use it in my case. So I used it only to find out that it literally blew up my data. It took me half a day scouring the internet, looking up the error and reading all kinds of blog posts and uh, stack overflow threads, but I just didn't succeed. And up until today, I still don't know the reason why it didn't work and it would probably be forever a mystery to me. So be prepared. If you don't think you have enough patience to tackle all these errors and unexpected issues without throwing your laptop out of the windows, this job may not be for you. Another thing that I noticed in retrospective is that in a lot of projects, we just didn't have enough data or the data is not usable. There are times when you desperately want to perform some 
some analysis or want to know something from the data because it's extremely important and interesting, but there's just no data available for the exact thing that you are trying to analyze. And other times, all you have is a handful of Excel files with very scattered data, very unstructured and hard to make sense of. You might have the ambitions to create some mind-blowing analysis, mind-blowing insights, but the reality might hit you hard. No matter how smart you are, how skillful you are, but if you just don't have proper data to work with, there's very little thing that you can do. Another obstacle that I think not many people mention is the evil of small numbers. Once I perform um, an equal pay analysis for a very small company of around 50 to 60 people. The small company size means that some departments have below 10 people and the male and female ratio is extremely skewed. So it obviously doesn't make sense to compare the average salaries of males and females in those departments. Small number makes it impossible to make a conclusion. You kind of do the analysis knowing that it's not going to be helpful and all you can say is that these results are indicative and it's not conclusive and it could also well be caused by just random chance. Another challenge as a data analyst or data scientist is the domain knowledge. We are the people who know a lot about what you can do with data and data wrangling and data modeling, etc. But you might not have enough domain knowledge that only the experts in the field might have. For example, when I work in projects uh, in healthcare or HR, for example, there are often things that are so specific about the field that I just find it so difficult to get my head around. And I have to kind of educate myself about all these um, nitty gritty details of that domain before I can actually understand and come up with the proper analysis on that data set. Well, no matter how much I want to complain about my job and all its unsexy challenges, I must admit that up until now, there's nothing I would rather be doing than crunching the data, modeling them, visualizing them, and hopefully providing some interesting insights for people who need it. I honestly think it's a great job for anyone being curious, creative, and who wants to learn continuously, no matter how painful and overwhelming that process might be. Remember that as a data analyst or data scientist, you have in your hands the powerful knowledge, skills, and technology, and the access to all kinds of abundance data around us and you have the power to shape someone's reality by the work that you do. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope that I didn't intimidate you too much. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye bye!